Flores Island, Indonesia. In part one of this adventure, I hired a motor scooter from Labuan Bajo on the west coast and made my way towards the village of Moni, from where I aimed to climb Kelimutu Volcano. Riding east towards the volcano, I travelled via the north road. On the way back to Bajo, I would take the express route west along the main road, returning to pick up my luggage and return the rented scooter. The bike appeared to have had some pretty rough treatment in the past, but it was the best I could obtain for the round journey of almost 1,200 kilometres over a nine-day period. We pick up the journey here in part two on the morning of day six, having awoken in Moni, ready to head out to the volcano. My arrival the night before in thick fog late in the afternoon was a welcome end to a long day. It was bright and sunny in Moni the next morning. Kelimutu and the lake of young moody spirits here, the aqua coloured one with the yellow sulphur and the one in the in the background is the lake of evil spirits now that has turned from dark blue to black in the last few days prompting an alert uh from the authorities uh, so they're, they're they're watching that at the moment and there's a third one to the west uh, it's the uh, lake of old people so i, I certainly have to visit that one but uh, i believe that that's uh, in normal status whereas these two uh tend to uh, change color quite frequently and uh, the recent change of colour, especially the one at the back there, the uh, Lake of Evil Spirits, that's gone really dark, indicating um, an increase of magma or, or, or you know, the composite of, uh, of elements, uh, which is um, just showing a, a few warning signs. So they've just got it to level two status. Next level would be, um, uh, what is that, standby alert, I think, and then evacuation. But uh, today it's cleared up and it's um, uh, nice to be up here on a, on a nice clear day. Uh, last night coming into the township of Moni, it was so foggy I could hardly see, you know, 10 metres ahead of me because my, my glasses kept fogging up. But um, anyway, made it in safely. The one at the rear is uh well that was uh in 1988 uh that was a red color uh and ac actually in 1968 i think that was white uh, mm, actually that's not quite right it was the near crater that was white back in 1968 but the crater behind it was certainly red then right through that period by 1988 the near crater had turned to a vivid shade of green while the lake of evil spirits at the rear was still a dark shade of red, as was the lake of old people to the west. Forty years on, in 2018, the near crater had turned to aqua, while the crater behind was still red, but that one would change to dark blue by 2023. It turned from dark blue to black in May of 2024. Can you believe they actually handed me this face mask uh, as I was just walking along the trail there and um, the sort of, you know, the ranger or whatever, I guess they're, they're policing this uh, closely at the moment, um, issuing these masks to people just uh, because of the level of sulfur in the air, I guess. But, uh, um, you know, I haven't felt dizzy or anything like that. But um, once the ranger sort of goes away, everyone just rips the masks off anyway. Got our volcanologist measuring various things, monitoring the situation. And there we have the Lake of Old People, and it's a, a sort of a deep green. I thought it was going to be black, but anyway, uh, sleeping peacefully apparently. 
is the volcanologist measuring God knows what. You measure the sulfur, sulfur in the air? Oh, okay. <laughs> She's making a careful analysis of things. Well, she had a bit of a serious look on her face, but I think everything's good. Yeah, I visited the the crater, which was cut off uh, from access um, with some um, caution tape. And then the uh, ranger came up and said oh danger danger you know and handed me the mask uh, I don't know maybe it was because that was the lake of evil spirits or something um, and I went there first a uh, bit of a bad omen maybe but I didn't smell any sulfur in the air but uh, you can see the yellow sulfur here on the uh, the lake of young moody spirits and this guy behind me sleeping peacefully All the way down there. Well, the clouds are starting to roll in now. Now that lake there, that's the lake of old people, that's 67 metres deep. But the deepest one of the three is this one here. A slow moving cloud like a veil being pulled over the lake. It can be a foggy and misty old place, uh, Moni. This, or well, that, that's the village around Kelly Mutu, anyway. Uh, like I say, last night was a challenge just getting here. It was sort of late in the afternoon. And the reason for that was I was held up by a couple of avalanches on the road. Uh, a two-hour delay on one of them. I'd spend one more night in Moni before making my way west all the way back to Labuan Bajo, where I began the journey. What's your name? Novlin. Novlin. <laughs> You're on camera. Well done. Hello! And this is how it's done on the roadside in Flores to top up. Roadside store. Yeah. So I'm getting a couple of litres. This is called Benz in here. Pertolite, I think, is another name they call it. Welcome to Bena traditional village. So you can see this is uh, Na'u. So the Na'u is a symbol life of men. And this is Baga. So this Baga symbol life of women. So, baga? Yes, Baga. So uh, oh, one Na'u and eh? one Baga. The symbol one tribes. Okay. One Na'u and one Baga. Baga? Uh, yes. Yeah, so baga me, eh? This is, so you can see. So this is a grave uh, bowl. So this is uh, 
flat flat stone is uh, Watu Nabe and this is high stone Watu Leva. So every ceremony there a little uh, foot, little foot put her stone. Oh I yeah, see. Yeah, every ceremony. So this is flat this uh, grave of women. Right. And this is high grave of men. I see. Yeah. Okay. And this is grave. I see. Yeah, grave. Oh. Ah, you can see this is their uh, pig toe, pig toe, and the big, the small oh, the pig toe, right. and the big, the pig, buffalo toe. Pig jaw, and, and what's the small ones? The, the small pig toe and the big uh, buffalo toe. Buffalo jaw. Buffalo jaw, yeah. Right. So this is a symbol, so uh, how this is house, the already, uh, it's named Kasao Ceremony. So Kasao Ceremony, a Finnish new traditional house. Okay. Yeah. This is their buffalo horn. Ah, uh, buffalo horn. Buffalo horn, yeah. So they, they, they all want to be photo you, with, with you. you with, with me? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. It's not oh. So you want a photo with me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> These are the spiderweb rice fields in Wei Balang, uh, about 16 kilometers west of the town of Ruteng in Flores. And you can see that they're sort of divided up into like a spiderweb shape. And uh, in the center there is a, sort of a communal area, I believe. But uh, each sort of division there, triangular division, is uh, owned by separate owners. Well, here's another view at ground level, and uh, you can see the length of the of the rice plants themselves. Um, uh, probably uh, doesn't show off the um, the spider web. Uh, nature, but uh, from the other view, you could see the, you could make out the the patterns. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> All the people here are so friendly and shy. It wasn't long before I was back in the seaside town of Labuan Bajo to complete an amazing nine-day journey. The Indonesian island of Flores is a great destination to discover and travelling solo by scooter opened up some great opportunities for interaction with the locals. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell if you're keen to watch more of my content. I also really appreciate your comments. See you on my next video.